हेलो फ्रेंड्स वेलकम बैक टू डी होप आप सभी का प्रिपरेशन बहुत अच्छे से चल रहा है आज फिल्म इज अप्रोचिंग वेरी फास्ट होप आप सभी का प्रिपरेशन भी बहुत जोर से चल रहा है तो इसके लिए हम ला रहे हैं आप सभी के लिए साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी के से प्रिलिम्स के रिविजन सीरीज सो वी आर कवर इन दिस रिविजन सीरीज वी आर कवरिंग द लास्ट वन एंड हाफ ईयर करंट अफेयर्स लास्ट वन एंड हाफ ईयर करंट अफेयर्स ओके तो इस रिविजन सीरीज में एज वी कवरिंग एवरीथिंग एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम साइंस एंड टेक्नोलॉजी अब हम कवर करने वाले हैं कोविड नाइन्टीन के बारे में एज यू नो द ट्वेंटी ट्वेंटी ईयर द टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी इज ऑल अबाउट कोरोना वायरस सो दिस बिकम्स वेरी मच इंपॉर्टेंट फॉर अस फॉर द एग्जाम टू प्रिपेयर एवरीथिंग फ्रॉम दिस तो इसके लिए हम इस लेक्चर में वी आर गोइंग टू कवर एवरीथिंग ऑल द फैक्ट्स विद रिगार्डिंग टू कोरोना वायरस सो दैट इफ एनी क्वेश्चन इज आस्क फ्रॉम दिस एरिया यू विल बी एबल टू आंसर दैट ओके तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं तो एज ए टोल यू ऑलरेडी द कंटेंट फॉर दिस लेक्चर इज एवरीथिंग अबाउट कोरोना वायरस एवरीथिंग अबाउट कोविड नाइन्टीन वेन इट ओरिजिनेटेड वेर इट ओरिजिनेटेड तो क्या क्या टेस्ट है इसके लिए हम सब कुछ कवर करते हैं तो चलिए शुरू करते हैं फर्स्ट द कोरोना वायरस इट वॉज ओरिजिनली डिटेक्टेड इन जनवरी टू थाउजेंड ट्वेंटी इन चाइना सो इनिशियली इट वॉज थॉट इट डज नॉट ट्रांसमिट फ्रॉम ह्यूमन टू ह्यूमन but later it was found that it even transmits from human to human so this is a new virus for us this is a new virus strain for us okay so this is also responsible for pneumonia like illness so initially when it, it started people thought it was just like pneumonia but later people realized the scientists have realized that it's a different kind of strain where it is causing pneumonia like illness okay so apart from human beings the corona virus can also affect different mammals like pigs cattle cats डॉग्स एंड सम बर्ड्स ऑल्सो एंड इट इज जूनोटिक जूनोटिक मतलब ये है कि इट कैन ट्रांसमिट फ्रॉम एनिमल्स टू ह्यूमन्स ट्रांसमिट फ्रॉम एनिमल्स टू ह्यूमन्स दैट इज द मेन थिंग ओवर हियर ओके सो रिमेंबर कोरोना वायरस वेर इज स्टार्टेड इन वुहान चाइना इट स्टार्टेड इन वुहान चाइना ओके so this what is the symptoms of it pneumonia like illness it causes that is number 2 and number 3 it is zoonotic that means it can transmit from animals to human beings it can affect animals yes it can affect animals so there can be different uh, statements wherein which they can be asked it does not affect animals it does not transmit from animals to humans such statements can be given okay so remember it can it can infect animals and also it can transmit from animals to humans okay so these are the important things next so is the, this is the first kind of coronavirus that you know the answer is no this is a different strain this is a new kind of strain that we came to know in 2020 that that we were infected by in 2020 okay so far four known disease causing coronavirus exist four types are there they are which are sars coronavirus and the middle east respiratory syndrome so both are kind of coronavirus so if the statement is asked is coronavirus this is the first kind of coronavirus that we know the answer is no we already know coronavirus this is a different new strain that we came to know in 2020 that we were infected by in 2020 okay so this is a new one already the coronavirus exist which is the sars coronavirus and the middle east respiratory syndrome next how it transmits so okay, kaise transmit hoga it transmits from air to air so recently the who also said that it is an airborne disease remember it is a airborne disease also so through air when people are near by coughing sneezing and through personal contact the disease can transmit and also if you shake hands with the per, with the person affected by the corona virus and if you touch the hands in your either near nose or eyes the disease can transmit to your body from the infected person so it it transmit very fast very rapidly okay so it transmits through air by coughing and sneezing and through personal contact such as touching of shaking of hands touching an object or surface with the corona virus on it then touching your mouth or eyes before washing your hands and also rarely from fecal contamination also it can transmit so these are the different ways of transmission okay remember coughing sneezing and also by touching these are the important things it is an airborne disease remember initially who said in the initial phase that it is not airborne but recently who has said that this can transmit through air okay so this is an airborne disease next so we will be hearing in news different stages of coronavirus what are these different stages of coronavirus 
not only coronavirus different stages will be there for every other disease for various diseases what are these stages how they are classified we will see here so in the first stage a disease is endemic that eventually takes the form of pandemic the first stage is something like it's an endemic and later it will become pandemic okay the cases are imported into a country which the infection did not originate this is the first stage so okay so initially the disease is in china from china the the disease which is endemic to china this is transmitted to various countries various countries like in, in the initial phase to italy and also to iran us lot of countries okay so in, for india recently we have seen the in surge in spike in the number of cases but in those countries the surge has already happened okay so the disease which was first initially started in china has started spreading to other countries where it was not there initially so this is the first stage first stage is an epidemic becoming a pandemic that is the first stage epidemic becoming a pandemic so what is epidemic epidemic means a disease which is contained in a country a disease which is contained in a country which is there in a country and it occurs frequently in that country seasonally it is called an epidemic it is called an epidemic but when this disease spreads from one country to another country when this disease spreads from one country to another country then it becomes pandemic it is spreading globally so it becomes pandemic so an epidemic becomes a pandemic when it spreads from one country to another country okay an epidemic becomes a pandemic as you can see here an infection whose spread is not contained within the boundaries of one or few countries then it is a pandemic as we know the coronavirus was not contained in china and its neighboring countries it has spread from china to us china to europe china to australia china to india china to various countries across the globe so even recently we have seen the disease is also has also been spread to andaman and nicobar islands to the particularly vulnerable tribes okay so that means the disease has spread to various countries and various regions to the nooks and corners of the of the world so that is why this is a pandemic it's a pandemic who has declared the disease as a pandemic okay that is pandemic so that is the first stage first stage is an endemic disease becoming a pandemic next the second stage second stage is when the virus starts being transmitted locally virus start trans transmitted locally that means first stage disease from china coming to the country let's say india after that the second stage is when the disease is being transmitted to india locally local transmission means that the source of infection is from within a particular area that means we are able to identify the source of infection within a particular area so let's say the person has traveled from wuhan to india wuhan to india so when this person traveled he he was you know he was carrying that virus and because of him it was spread locally to another person this person is a from him it spread to b it has spread to b so as it has spread to b we know we have established that for b the virus has come from a so we we have established that contact so this is stage 2 stage 2 is where the local transmission take place and we are able to identify the source we are able to identify the source that is called the second stage next that third stage is that of community transmission the third stage is community transmission what is this community transmission community transmission means the disease has been spread to more than 40 50% of the population and we don't know the source of the spread from where that person got the got the virus we don't know in the second stage we know the source from where the person b is getting the virus we know the source it is person a who traveled abroad but in the third stage we don't know from where the virus is coming so the community transmission community mein transmission ho raha hai sabhi ko source hame pata nahi that is called community transmission this is the third stage okay this is the third stage next the fourth stage fourth stage is when this disease which came from abroad has transmitted locally it becomes endemic to that country matlab seasonally it is occurring in that country this is called fourth stage so there are four stages first stage an endemic in one country becoming a pandemic second stage this pandemic has been spread locally but we are able to identify the source the third stage 
the disease has been spread locally community transmission has been going on and we are not able to identify the source of the spread next the fourth stage fourth stage is when this disease has become endemic even in the other countries where it was spread endemic matlab it occurs timely time and again it occurs in that country let's say malaria and dengue seasonally it will occur to the people in the country like that it has become endemic to all the countries that is the fourth stage okay these are the different stages that we have in disease transmission next schedule h1 drug why this was in use so schedule h1 drug why this was in use is we have seen recently that the hydroxychloroquine this hydroxychloroquine it's an anti malarial drug so initially it was thought that this hydroxychloroquine can be used for the treatment of coronavirus initially it was it was thought that this hydroxychloroquine will help the patients suffering from covid-19 so that is why it has helped a lot of patients to an extent but not completely so as it was very important in this in this difficult times the so government has placed this drug hydroxychloroquine under the schedule h1 okay so government under its powers has placed it in uh, the schedule h1 so it was done in exercise of its powers conferred by the section 26b drugs and cosmetics act of 1940 it is to stop the misuse of the drug so what is the main use the main use is to stop the misuse of the drug okay and also the pharmacist and all they will not be able to sell the drug without any prescription so prescription will be needed in order to sell the drug so when you give the prescription only then the pharmacist will give you the drug and also he will note all the details as it restricts the sale and also the drug inspectors will be able to check will be able to go to the pharmacies and check whether the drugs has been sold in according to the norms established or not okay only prescription sale is allowed and also initially the export is also banned after we have achieved its self sufficiency only then we have resumed the exports this is about the hydroxychloroquine next one the ossification test so this is a test to determine the age it's an age determined test the human bones are remodeled you know and a new layer of bone material is laid okay so this, this that's why this was in use it's not much important ossification test is an age determining test remember that next continuing with the coronavirus we are we are hearing lot about the plasma therapy what is this plasma therapy all about what is this plasma therapy so when a person recovers from covid 19 when a person recovers from covid 19 his blood will have antibodies his blood will have antibodies for that virus antibodies means so the body will produce some of the antibodies for that virus you know to kill that virus some antibodies will be produced for the infected people infected person so in order to make use of the antibodies developed in the recovered patients so if an antibody is developed in a recovered patient this antibodies can be used <coughs> excuse me <coughs> this antibodies which are developed in the recovered patient this can be used in the person who is not affected or who is suffering from it these antibodies can be used so that means we are transferring these antibodies from a recovered patient to a patient whom who is currently suffering or in whose body the antibodies are not there okay that is called the plas covalent plasma therapy so the blood plasma contains these adding antibodies and we are transferring the blood plasma from an infected patient and recovered patient a recovered patient blood will have this antibodies and from this person we are transferring to the person who is currently suffering and does not have antibodies we are transferring these antibodies from the recovered patient to this person that is called the plasma therapy the whole blood or plasma from such people is taken the recovered people is taken and the plasma is then is then injected in the critically ill patient so that these antibodies will now start developing in the body of the patient who is suffering okay and this will help in fighting against the virus so who has released guidelines so what are these guidelines so a mandatory requirement is that the permission has to be taken from the donor donor's permission is very much required and also if a person has donated plasma let's say if he has donated today then he can donate the blood and the plasma again only after 12 weeks it is 12 weeks for male and 16 weeks for female okay so only once in 12 weeks a person can donate the plasma that is about the covalent plasma therapy okay next one rapid test 
so rapid test is ensure the speed results within half an half an hour so this is conducted to determine whether there has been any kind of recent viral infection in the person body or not so when a pathogen infects enters a uh, enters a person body specific antibodies are produced so we are what we are doing in this type of test is that we are testing the person body for that antibodies for that antibodies if the antibodies are there that means the person is either already infected and recovered okay so a person who is recovered will have this antibodies so what we are doing is we are testing for these antibodies so that we we will be able to determine how many people have been affected by this virus how many people have been affected we will determine this that is called the rapid test rapid antibody test so a rapid test can detect the presence of such antibodies in the blood serum and plasma samples very quickly okay next one herd immunity herd immunity is when large number of people are vaccinated against a disease lowering the chances of others being infected by it that means large people large, let's say there are 100 people and out of 100 people 60 almost 50 to 60 people they got infected by this virus and they've developed antibodies so that means when large portion of population got affected by this and they have developed antibodies that means this disease will not be able to spread to other 40 40 people that easily because already the affected people has the antibodies in them so the disease cannot spread so that means the herd that means the large body or you can say the large population they have the immunity against the disease this is called herd immunity that means large portion of population getting the immunity when large portion of population get the immunity that means the disease will not be able to spread among the population okay that is called the herd immunity it is also required referred to as community transmission community immunity or herd protection that is herd immunity next atulia atulia is the cost effective solution to disintegrate corona virus it's a cost effective solution disintegrate corona virus so in public if, if you know generally lot of public places the infected person and the non infected person or everyone will be there so what you have to do yeah, the people who are there they have to disinfect that and they have to disintegrate the corona virus for that this atulia is used disintegrating and sanitizing the places this atulia can be used it's a microwave sterilizer that can be operated in portable or fixed installations and help in disintegrating the virus by differential treating in range of 50 to 60 celsius temperature it is developed by defense institute of advanced technology pune developed by defense institute of technology pune remember atilia defense institute of technology pune next one cosens what is cosens it is a biosensor it's a biosensor that can detect the novel corona virus in saliva samples biosensor that detects the corona virus in saliva samples developed by the national institute of animal biotechnology hyderabad okay this can give results within 30 seconds using just 20 microliter of the sample it's a, it's a, it's also a kind of rapid test that means we can get the results very fast it is called cosens cosens is detecting the corona virus through the saliva and this can be done very fastly developed by national institute of animal biotechnology hyderabad it's a biosensor next one ultraviolet germicidal radiation uvgi ultraviolet germicidal radiation what is this scientists are studying the use of ultraviolet germicidal radiation to detect corona virus in schools restaurants and other public places so using this method ultraviolet rays will be sent and this will disinfect the contaminated public places this will sanitize the contaminated places for that the ultraviolet germicidal radiation is being used sanitization okay it uses the destructive properties of uv light to target the pathogens so when that uv light target the pathogens they, there will be destruction of these pathogens so this property is being used okay next one covid kavach elisa it is developed by national institute of virology pune developed by national institute of virology pune it is india's first indigenous antibody based elisa test kit remember covid kavach elisa elisa test kit developed by national institute of virology pune so it can test around 90 samples in 2 and 1/2 hours so it's very fast test okay next one swasthvay so bangalore based national aerospace limited has developed with this kind of ventilator named swasthvay it's a non invasive breathing support device for the use of non critical and non icu cases of covid 19 so biap stands for bi level positive airway pressure so it uses 
electricity in order to pump and motors in order to pump the oxygen okay swasthvayu is a kind of ventilator developed by national aerospace limited next pcr testing so we have heard lot in news what is pcr testing so this is a test for the covid 19 why this is important is that generally this lot of test lot of test what we do is the dna test we will do for other diseases let's say the other normal viral diseases we will do dna test but for corona virus we need to do the rna test because it is an rna virus it infil it infiltrates the cell and multi multiply very quickly it's an rna rna virus so we have to do the rna test so for that what we are doing is that we are converting this rna to dna and then we are performing the test that is called the pcr testing the P, the rt pcr testing is conversion of rna to dna and then doing the test are, here you can see the rna is converted to dna through a process called reverse transcription it, that is called that is the rt reverse transcription and pcr pcr is the test to determine the to test to test of the dna in order to determine whether the virus is present or not okay that is pcr testing so this pcr testing is a double double sword that means there can be false positives also and false negatives also why why because there are few areas where the virus won't be there so when the saliva is tested sometimes the virus might not be present in saliva so the false positive or a false negative can happen or a false negative can happen you can say in fact or a false positive when the surrounding area surrounding infected area the strain comes from that then a false positive can happen so so these are some of the problems that we have surrounding the pcr testing okay next serological test was in news was was lot in news what is this serological test so lot of public you know lot of people in the public have been infected by the corona virus already okay so we have to determine who got infected and who are not infected okay so for that what we are doing we are doing lot of test we are doing survey that is called the serological survey so for that serological test is generally a viral infection can be two kinds the genetic kind and the serological kind okay the genetic kind can identify infections that are active but not the past infections that means if you are suffering currently only then it will be known but not but but that test cannot determine whether you have already suffered from that or not but the serological test will determine whether you have already been infected by that disease or not it is just antigen molecules as i told you already there will be antibodies in every person if he has been infected by corona virus so using this using this concept we are testing for the antibodies in the people so if we know that if the antibodies exist in that person that means he has already been infected and recovered from the virus even if the person does not know he might be a carrier unknowingly he might be a carrier unknowingly so for that we use the serological test it is a antigen molecule to determine whether the antibodies are present in the person's body or not that is the use of serological test serological survey is the serological test will be done for large part of the population and we will determine how much percentage of population has already been infected by the virus that is a serological survey okay now let's revise everything what we have studied till now let's revise so corona virus it is a new virus started in january 2020 so it is a pneumonia like illness we have seen that and it can transmit from human animals to humans and also it can transmit from animal to animal also okay it can it can affect lot of mammals okay the mammals include pigs cattle cats dogs etc next one as we have seen already the, we have already know known lot of corona viruses the four kinds already we know the sars corona virus the middle east respiratory syndrome these are the corona virus that already exist okay and the transmission takes place through air it's an airborne disease like when a person coughs or sneezes it can transmit from one person to another next there are different stages the first stage is an endemic becoming a pandemic that means where the corona virus existed from there it is transmitted globally that is it becomes pandemic from endemic that is stage 1 and stage 2 is when the disease transmits locally and we are able to identify the source of that disease that is stage 2 next is stage 3 where we are not able to identify the source that means community transmission has started that is stage 3 and stage 4 is when this pandemic has become endemic in other countries also that means it is occurring timely in those countries so that is the stage 4 
next one schedule h1 drug the hydroxychloroquine has been placed in the schedule h1 drug that means you will be you will not be able to purchase that drug without the prescription of a doctor next one ossification test this is to determine the age next is the covalent plasma therapy so what is this covalent plasma therapy that means the transfer of plasma from a, from already a recovered person the recovered person has antigens in his as antibodies in his blood and we are transferring this plasma to the person who is infected and who is suffering from that disease okay that is the covalent plasma therapy so next is rapid test rapid test is that test where we are testing for the antibodies in the recovered patients that is called rapid test next herd immunity is when large large portion of population becomes immune to a particular disease then it is called herd immunity next atulia it is a cost effective solution to disintegrate coronavirus atulia it is developed by the defense institute of advanced technology diit pune it's a cost effective solution to disintegrate coronavirus next is covsense it's a biosensor that can detect the novel coronavirus through the saliva samples developed by the national institute of animal biotechnology hyderabad next one uv germicidal radiation this is to disinfect that is sanitize the public places it uses the destructive properties of the uv rays next one covid kavach elisa this covid kavach elisa is a antibody test developed by the national institute of virology pune national institute of virology pune this has developed this next one swasthvayu it's a national aerospace limited uh, you know it's it's um, basically a ventilator developed by the national aerospace limited ventilator next one the pcr testing pcr testing is a testing for the coronavirus so it's an rna testing so it's it's rna testing how it is so the rna is converted to dna and then the test is being done the rt pcr it is called rt is reverse transcription so that is about it next one serological test serological test is testing for the antibodies a large portion of population using an antigen molecule to detect the presence of antibodies okay this is called serological test and when the serological test is done on large portion of population then it is called the serological survey okay so we will by this we will know how much per percentage of population has been affected by this this is called serological survey okay so that's it friends in this lecture i'll see you again in the next lecture till then keep studying and stay tuned so do subscribe to this channel thank you